Hello and welcome back to the channel, everyone. I, of course, am Dan. And I might be Jake. You, you might be. Have you checked your ID lately? Because uh, that's that's kind of important. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. I'm Jake. He's Jake. Okay. So we're good. Hypothetically, we are about halfway through the year right now, right? Give or take, we're, yeah. We're, yeah, about a week. So it's time to recap what we've done in the previous months and lay out a top 10 so far if the year ended today. If a meteor hit the earth. Today. You'd know. Yeah, you'd know. And this would be our top 10. These are gonna go in absolutely no particular order. This is just our 10 favorites right now at this moment in time. So Jake. That we had to try this year. Yeah, we have to try them this year. Just same criteria as with our end of the year stuff. We have to own the bottle. It cannot be a store pick. We had to have tried it this year and reviewed it this year. Had to have been a release from this year. Mm -hmm. So let's get to it, shall we? A shall. So coming up, number one, you know what? Let's do budget. Budget first. Jim Beam, black label, Seven year. Surprisingly good. Surprisingly really good. They bumped up the proof a little bit. That thing just- Aged a little bit longer. It stays with you. It's a good shelfer. It's great for the price. And you know what? It's better than some of the stuff we've had this year. Can't so, be mad at it at all. No, we can't. So that one's gonna be one I keep on my bar at all times. Now let's go weird. Weird. Spoggy Burl Malt. This one surprised the hell out of me because I'm not a malty profile person. I don't like malt whiskeys most of the time, but apparently We're much like lean into much it. like Jake's uh, affiliation with the whole rye whiskey thing, my affinity for uh, for malt whiskey might Starting be. to just dip your toes yeah, in. Yeah, just dip the old toesies in. The toe beans are getting wet and well, I, I might actually end up liking malt whiskey at some point. So, hard to say. Next one, hard, hard, you say hard? Hard, hard, say. hard truth. That is a great model. So hard truth, the new Farmer's Reserve, this bad boy, oh my goodness. Knock your socks right off. So we had a viewer comment on the video that we released of this saying that this pairs really well with vanilla bean ice cream. So- Don't tempt me with a good time. We hear you, we've read the comment, and I'll tell you what, we're gonna do something really weird with this in the coming weeks, and you're, I, feel, I think you're gonna like it. So we have plans. We have plans for this one. But it's good to see a distillery out of Indiana coming make in. The make, make the list, it's coming up. <sighs> Hard Truth's doing some good stuff. Indeed. Well, now we'll go to your favorite. My favorite. Uh, Old Forester 1924. Old Forester 1924. This one. It's a, an extension of the Whiskey Row series, mm -hmm. and it drinks like a birthday bourbon. At least to me, it does. It drinks. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the best Old Forester products I've had outside of a few store picks. Mm -hmm. So we don't really see higher age statements at all from Old Forester outside of birthday bourbon, President's Choice, mm -hmm. that kind of Some stuff. Some store picks if you find the right ones they aren't we don't even know the age on those really they don't put age statements on them or anything because usually they're around four years what am i thinking of i have no clue russell's reserve maybe maybe possibly 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 so yeah this one just blew our socks off i i swear up and down it drinks like a birthday bourbon every bit of it so you know what i'm i'm thirsty i'm gonna pour myself something I'll join you. And while we're pouring this up, if you wouldn't mind, go down below, hit that like and subscribe button. We are very close to 500, and I want to tell you what that bottle is for that giveaway, but we can't do it until we hit 500. So do us all a favor, do every one of you watchers a favor, go tell your friends, tell your wife, tell your kids, if they're 21 or over, tell your grandma, tell your aunt, go subscribe to the Whiskey Watchers so we can get this bottle. Tell your bar buddies. Yeah, tell your bar, bar buddies because we want to get this bottle in your hands and not ours. Not that it's a bad bottle. <laughs> so. Oh, it's my turn, isn't it? Sorry, I'm yeah. sitting here nosing. Well, you just brought up the 1924. Oh yeah, it's your turn. So it's my turn. And my turn's gonna be this here 
Bernheim Barrel Proof. A thin boy. This bad boy surprised the heck out of me. It's a wheat whiskey out of Heaven Hill. Again, Tony, mash bills on the front. Mash bills on the front. 51 wheat, 37 corn, 12 malted barley. Ah, disclosing everything for you, buddy. <laughs> Which is very nice for distilleries to do, you know? It's not very often you see the mash bill presented and they just slap it on the label and call it great. Yeah. Damn. Right. That thing slaps. I don't care who you are or what you say. I think in a blind, this would hold up to a few of these. Gotta bask in the glory for a moment. <laughs> so what do we have next? Next up was on the shelf for, well, no, it wasn't, was it? Yeah, it, yeah, it, it was. It was on the shelf a for, a little, for about two weeks. Two weeks. Jack Daniels 12 year. One of the better Jack Daniels products I've had. Any Jack Daniels special release that isn't a black label old number seven is, is killer. Generally pretty good. That's one of the first barrel proof ryes I had. I'm like, this is rye. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I might like rye. What's happening to me? Start scratching everywhere, like having an allergic reaction. I can reaction. see the rye growing through my skin. I gotta get it out. <laughs> Yeah, Jack Daniels has one of the few rye whiskeys that he will openly say he likes. Otherwise, I have to blind him and hope to God he places it higher up. Parker's Heritage tenure, by the yeah. way. Anyway. I know. I'm starting to dip my toes into the rye world. Mm. Might have a foot in at this point. Mm -mm -mm. So, moving on. I gotta go to the floor for this one. We're going down. <sighs> A See, shocking bottle. Any any one of you people out there, distributors, producers, make a box that I can I can actually get the bottle out of. Every other box that we've had on this channel, I have to fight with. But Blood Oath not only did it right this year with Pack Ten, but they do it right with the boxes. Imagine if they started staining and. Like like charring the, the box a little bit. That would have been really cool. Clear coating it. But yeah, Blood Oath Pack 10 surprised the absolute crap out of us. Um, this double finish Cabernet Franc and Merlot casks with an older aged whiskey, two younger whiskeys. We don't know the exact age statements on those. They don't say. Um, supposedly the oldest is 16 years old in this. But anyway, this thing surprised the heck out of us. And uh, we absolutely love it. You looking around for something? Yeah, I thought I had more bottles over here. I guess I was wrong. No, I have one. Actually, I have two more. And then the other one's nearby. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so here you go, talk about that one now. Speaking of Jack, again. <laughs> that one was on the shelf a lot longer than the 12 year. It's not very often you see us uh, say, <clears throat> excuse me. The younger age is beating the crap out of 12 year. I think we found Jack's sweet spot out of 10 years. See, I, I like them both almost equally, but that 10 year... In my mind, the 10 year was a superior product. It gives, it gives more of those mature notes. I mean, the yes. 12 year has a lot, of, a lot more fruit to it, um, but which I appreciate. I do appreciate, but... 10 year was way more balanced. It, it is, it is. It's not super sweet, super fruity, super like oaky, super leathery. It just plays really well um, it does have a little bit more of an oak presence, mm. but you're gonna get that being older said. age whiskey. Yeah, and it's it's really good. So another one that kind of surprised us because Jake even admitted he liked it. Oh God, going to the floor again. Scooting bottles over. Ten bottles is a lot to uh, to put up here, but that's okay. So this one out of Beam A Overholt, the Mahanga Gila Mash. Mononga. Anyway. Why does that sound like a song? <laughs> you know what? I, 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 could, I could see that. Kind of like the Monster Mash. Exactly. Yeah. But this thing surprised the heck out of us. It It is very flavorful. It's a gentle pour. It's something that you could just give to a, a, a friend, an enthusiast, because it's different. It really is different. Um, it has... This lovely mash bill, 80% rye, 20% soft malted barley for balance. Mm -hmm. And they say balance and they actually achieve balance. Yeah. 
It's like, you know, Anakin Skywalker after he, you know, is redeemed. Now that he's the father. Yeah, now that he's the father, he's, he has achieved balance. The father, the you know. Father. Everybody, all you Star Wars fans who are way too into Star Wars know exactly what that means. <laughs> And then, you know, he has an apprentice who is the daughter, so. Yeah. So, finally, finally, the shelfer that if we put it, if we ranked them from 10 to 1, this one would be number one, obviously. It's sitting on the shelf for a reason. This it is stupid good. This is the 13 year, 25th anniversary VVS Old Fitzgerald. The 1999 to 2013 was yeah. when it was vatted. And held on to for a special occasion. And, and this just so happened to be it. Parker Beam and his team, when they tasted it, just kind of went crazy for it. Oh, wow. And we we went crazy for I it. I know. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I don't like going crazy over expensive bottles, but this one was just too good. It, it was very good. Uh, I actually found out what VVS stands for. I always wanted to know what VVS stands for. It stands for very, very special. So ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. If a, it's 10 plus an S, whatever an S says in Roman numerals. <laughs> right. I, I don't know what an S means. I know, I know a V is five. M is a thousand. So if the earth ended today, if a meteor hit, if, you know. Dinosaurs some, took back the earth. Yeah, for some reason. These are the 10 bottles. The that, lizard people rise up. <laughs> these are the 10 bottles that we would, uh, would say are our top 10 so far this year. Um, they're absolutely delicious. And, you know, we, we hope to God you all can find a few of these, put them on your bar, share them with friends and family. And go speaking, halfsies with a guy. Yeah, go halfsies with people. I mean, that's not an obscene thing these days. No. Some of these bottles are so astronomically priced, it would be better for you to just go halfsies with someone that absolutely wants the bottle. I mean, I knew a guy who won a uh, Weller, the big Weller. Big boy Weller? Yeah. And it was uh, $2,200. Him and... Five or six of his buddies all went in together and bought it. Oh, the William LaRue Weller? Mm hmm Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So instead of spending 2200 he spent like a couple hundred. A few hundred. Yeah. And they all just got together and drank yep. it. So, yeah, that's another way to, to get a few of these bottles that are on the table here. But anyway, we want to thank you for joining us again. These are our top ten so far through halfway. 2024 through the year of 2024. And we want to remind you again to go down, hit that like and subscribe button over there by Jake, ring that notification bell. And until we drink again, we want to remind you to share a pour with your friends and family, because just like the movies, memories do not make themselves. You are darn tootin', buddy. Cheers. Cheers to all you watchers.